Hey everyone, Katie and Sergeant Steele here, and today we are talking about the Field Ordnance Battery, but in particular with the Bombast Field Gun. Now I will be covering this later on with the Malleus Rocket Launcher and the Heavy Last Cannon, but in their own separate unit reviews, because I would really recommend to play each of these loadouts differently. And I don't think I necessarily recommend mixing up the loadouts either, um, just because they all function and shoot different targets. So you're going to want them in different positions and working different ways. But in honor of the artillery series I am currently filming and doing, we are going to be talking about the Bombast Field Gun. So let's dive into it. This is a Movement 4, Toughness 5, 4 up save, 6 wound, Leadership 7, 2 OC unit. Now that is per model. That means each of these has OC2 and 6 wounds. Now, if you remember what I just said there, though, it only has movement four. This is not intended to be a unit that you move around after you set it up, which is perfectly fair. And if you go look at the Forge World range of its carriage artillery and the rules for it, they're the same way. You set it up, they only have four inch movement. You're not supposed to be shuffling them around once they hit the battlefield. So that's going to kind of sum up a lot of the deployment and the use that this unit's going to have uh, if you decide to put it in your list. Uh, with Toughness 5, it's going to be able to stick around a good bit, which is really nice uh, that you can actually keep this in the game. And especially with the 4-up save, that means cover is going to put you at a Space Marine save. So not bad, not bad at all. And with six wounds per model, this thing also has some pretty decent resiliency. Once again, with the wounds, um, really just kind of keeping it in there. So... Every time you get six wounds, you got to take one of these away and it doesn't degrade. Overall, great stats, but let's talk about its war gear. So every single one of these models has a LAS gun, has a LAS pistol, and then you choose between the heavy LAS cannon, bombast field gun, and Malleus rocket launcher. Easy way to remember it is each of these individual like infantrymen on the base have a weapon. One with a LAS gun, one with a pistol, and one is operating the artillery itself. Nice and simple. Now, as for the piece of war gear that we are discussing today, the Bombast Field Gun, it is blast, heavy, and indirect fire. It is range 48 inches, D6 attacks, ballistic skill 5, strength 7, minus 1 AP, 2 damage. So it has lower ballistic skill than the self-propelled artillery, such as the Basilisk or the Death Strike or Manticore. Uh, and so forth, you know, it's only at a five. And if you look once again at the Forge Roar artillery carriages, they're the same way, five up ballistic skill. Now the benefit of this is that it does have the regiment keyword and infantry keyword as well. Uh, this is not a vehicle. So that means your officers, your Cadian Castellans, Creed, your command squads can issue this unit orders. That's really good to know and can create a lot of flexibility for how you kind of operate the unit. But back to the weapon, what I mean by that is that allows you to modify that ballistic skill much easier. You don't need a tank commander, you don't need Leontis if you want to give this take aim. So with Blast, that means this is going to be best against multi-model units. So five plus model units is where you're going to want to do this. Because what's going to happen is, is when you shoot, it's going to be D6 shots per model plus Blast. That's pretty good. So if you shoot a 10-man unit of intercessors, you're going to get four shots because of blast. Then your two D6 shots, which will average you out to 11 shots against a 10-man unit of intercessors, right? Really, really good at getting a number of shots out when it comes to artillery. Remember, the, even the Basilisk maxes out at nine. This can go up to 12 without blast kicking in, uh, but also a potential minimum of two, which is why I think this does best against multi-model units. Let's talk about, real quick, before we dive into all the strategies and how I've used this unit, let's dive into its ability and what makes it unique. It is rearm, reload, fire. While this unit is being affected by an order, so it's gotta be affected by an order, and provided it remains stationary this turn, okay, can't move, we already don't want to move it, and it's affected by an order, 
All heavy weapons equipped by models in this unit have sustained hits one ability. All right, well, that's, that's pretty good. So once again, that's enticing us to maximize the number of shots we can get. Once again, shooting multiple model units and trying to roll high on our number of shots so we can get those sixes to generate additional hits. With the new indirect fire rule, if you have line of sight, that will permit for you to still get your lethals. If you have line of sight, you can get lethal hits. So sustained hits and lethal hits it could really, really do some damage to your opponent. Well, what do you want to shoot with this? Okay, we talk about multi-model units, probably not vehicles, probably not monsters. So we're talking about your elites, your infantry, your terminators, your space marines. Um, looking at Eldar or even infantry, any any of the little guys running around on the battlefield, that is the target of this unit. So what I would do with this unit is I would actually deploy it in my deployment zone and usually in such a manner as to screen out the back corner. So I'm going to ask my opponent, hey, can you deep strike in less than nine inches? Do you have anything that lets you do that? Unit ability, stratagems, da da da. Depending on what they say, that's going to determine where this unit goes. Either nine inches from the corner, nine inches from an edge, depending on what other units I have back there and how I'm screening out. And it's gonna block out my backfield. And it's gonna hide behind the buildings. I am not pulling this out for direct line of sight shooting. I'm, I'm just not, that's not the way I'm gonna run this unit. It's not the way I recommend to run it either. So then you're gonna be shooting indirect, which means yes, you're gonna lose lethals, but trust me, it's gonna be okay. It's uh, lethals are a nice little bonus and they often make a bigger difference on certain targets. But this is going to get lethals against everything that's not monster and vehicle because there's a regiment keyword. Well, you're already strength seven on the weapon. So do you really need the lethals to guarantee those wounds? No, not necessarily. And so for that reason, I think it's fine to keep this one out of line of sight. Unlike if you watch my other videos, I say with the Basilisk and the Manticore, you know, it, it may behoove you to actually put that into some terrain and then shoot out of the terrain and hit your enemy um, or put it somewhere where it can get line of sight. You don't have to, but it's a good advantage. Not with this unit, not how I recommend doing it. So that's how I would deploy it. The next thing is obviously target selection. So once again, not monsters and vehicles. You want to try to probably go for things that are T6 and lower, T7 at best. So this way you can try to wound on threes, fours at worst, and get those wounds in there. Especially because this is going to be a little bit of an unreliable weapon. With the random number of shots, unless your opponent does have large units, right? So they have hordes or they have 10-man units at least, then you're going to struggle sometimes. You're going to only get a, end up getting like four shots some turns or... Then every once in a while, maybe in turn three, turn five, maybe you'll roll a lucky, you know, 14 shots and then your sustained hits will kick in and then you'll get 16 hits or something wild. But you shouldn't rely on that. This is a unit that's going to be very sporadic. And so with that, I would usually do one of two things in terms of deciding when to shoot it. I would either fire it into a horde while it exists or a large 10 man unit, you know, 10, 15, 20 man units, I'd fire it into them. If they're on the battlefield and I'd shoot this first and then try to use my direct line of sight units to mop up whatever is left. Now, remember, because this unit is about hitting and wounding, that's its unit ability, the rearm, reload, fire. It doesn't give them minus one to movement or minus two movement or minus one to hits or it's, it's not a utility artillery piece, right? It doesn't have any other utility to it other than killing. So you want to hit the targets this can kill. That is its intended targets. Uh, it's very straightforward in that. A lot of guard players play that way. A lot of 40K players play that way. They're like, oh, what can I kill? They often don't think about the utility of their units. And I cover the utility about the Basilisk and the Wyvern in those unit reviews. But with this one here, it doesn't have that utility. It just kills. So we want to be targeting the units it can take out. So I would recommend maybe shooting it first, or you could wait to keep it last. And then same with the Basilisk or the Manticore or something else, you could try to plink off the last few wounds or last few models on a unit. Now that could include vehicles, by the way. You'd be wounding on fives most of the time, but you could, if it's got two wounds left, try to just knock that vehicle out, especially if it scores you victory points. If it scores you victory points, do it. 
So that could be something else that you do with this unit um, in terms of your firing selection. And it just depends on the context of your game and the battle round. Sometimes I'll fire this first, sometimes I fire it last. Um, so take it into context and decide when it's best to shoot this unit. I usually don't shoot it in the middle of my turn. It's usually always first or last kind of a deal. Now, how would I synergize this unit? All right. There's a couple things you can do. Obviously, it's regiment, so officers can issue it orders. And when it has an order, it gets sustained hits one. Well, the best buffing unit in the game, though, without orders, is just the Scout Sentinel. Just the humble Scout Sentinel with your field ordnance battery. Why the Scout Sentinel? Because when this thing does daring recon, it negates your minus one to hit, and you're heavy. So it takes your ballistic skill five to get a plus one, so now you're hitting on fours. And you're re-rolling ones. So then you're fishing, potentially, if you have an order for those sustained hits. That's really good. If you are lucky and you have line of sight, then you could be hitting on uh, fours and getting lethals as well. So fishing for lethals and sustained hits. So the Scout Sentinel is the single best buffing unit for the field ordnance battery or any other carriage artillery because of the way the Daring Recon ability works. Of course, your opponent will still get a cover save and you'll still always miss on a one, two, or three with the new indirect fire rules. But that's fine because you're just re-rolling ones, hitting on four still. So I think that's really great. Now, in terms of orders, anything can issue disorders. And with if you're not taking Master Voxes, something's wrong with you. Like, we need to have a talk. We need to have one-on-one -on -one sergeant time and discuss what you're doing. You should be taking your master boxes and your command squads, and you should be doing those 24-inch order range so you have maximum flexibility across the battlefield, unless you have a unit dedicated to sitting in your backfield and issuing orders. I prefer the flexibility, though. If you don't want to leave a unit in your backfield, though, and you don't have the ability to dedicate a Master Vox because you want to take a special weapon instead, and you're trying to figure out to get this orders, well, Take Aim actually doesn't do a lot for this unit, right? I, I'm always going to miss on a one, two, or three. And if I'm doing Daring Recon from a Scout Sentinel, well, then Take Aim isn't doing much unless the opponent has a minus one to hit um, kind of aura or ability. So Take Aim's not going to do a whole lot. So what you could do is give them a Commissar. Oh, so you could give them the plus one OC order, right? And make them OC three per base. If they're near your backfield objective, that might be relevant, maybe not. But that then triggers its ability. It's under the effect of an order. It remains stationary, so you get sustained hits one. And your Commissar is your cheapest kind of officer in that way so and if you got infantry squads nearby right say you got something holding your backfield objective or guarding a flank well as long as he's in range to use his ability he could still be useful to make sure that they could not be battle shocked um at the beginning of a phase so if they fail in your command phase then the beginning of your movement phase you can unbattle shock that unit with the commissar so he could still serve some other utility as well while issuing uh, one of his two orders he has available to him to the field ordnance battery. So that's kind of a neat creative workaround here uh, for dedicating orders to this unit without like sinking points into a Castellan Creed or Command Squad or something to sit back and babysit your field ordnance batteries. Now, if you're taking multiple field ordnance batteries, which my good friend Jerry has done and which I raised an eyebrow to him when he did it, and he, I was like, oh, I don't know about this. And we played a guard versus guard game and he smashed me. He smashed me really good. Cause surprisingly, three of these, three of these units with all bombast field guns can dish out a lot of damage. He was doing some wild stuff like getting my Crassus armored transport down to just like four or six wounds. Or he was blowing up chimeras, right? The things that bombast field guns had almost no business shooting at. He was shooting at them and then just wiping them out. My infantry could not survive against these. And he had put in his backfield, I think, a Castellan with a command squad, but no other kind of like unit for them to attach to. They were just hidden behind a building issuing orders. And that's a valid way to approach using 
these units with officers. You could just like set some back, hidden back there with them. It does make them subject to, if they're not attached to a unit, right, using their leader ability, then they could be at risk of being shot with indirect fire from your opponent. So that's something you would want to avoid, but not to say it's not a viable strategy because I've had it done to me and it was rather effective. So kudos to Jerry also for proving me wrong in my presuppositions about how you should play this unit. I love that. I love that about this community. Let's think outside the box. Let's be creative. Let's come up with stuff. So overall, I think this is a really good unit. I think it's actually something that we need to be thinking about, that we need to be considering putting into our list, especially with the indirect fire rule changes now. This is a more viable unit than it ever has been. And when you're comparing it, if you're taking artillery for killing, okay, and not their utility, if you're not using a basilisk for minus two movement, if you're not using a wyvern for minus one to hit, then you might as well be taking maybe a bombast field gun instead because they're built for killing and they oftentimes do it better. Not always though, a little less predictable, but they often do it better. So that's why I think this unit has a special place in our army. Now, during this month, I'm um, filming this video at the beginning of July, I'll be running this unit in my competitive league list. And I'm very excited to be doing that. We'll be taking it with an Aegis defense line of all things, because I want to see if that also has utility in matched play. I know it has utility in narrative play, Maybe I'll even take it to the Nova Open with me or the Grand Narrative. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to be trying that out uh, with an Earthshaker carriage battery and a field ordnance battery here. Um, just trying those two units out with the Aegis defense line and guarding and screening my backfield that way. All right. That's all I have for you today. This is a longer unit review, but I think it was well deserved and something we need to talk about. I think the field ordnance batteries have been overlooked in 10th edition. And now with the changes, you may want to dust them off. You may want to finish painting them and put them on the battlefield and try them out. Also, I just want to note that I think these are some of the best models. The new Sentinels, the new Field Ordnance Batteries are some of the best models GW has ever made for the guard. These inspire me to make dioramas. I love that they have like the hitch point for like the, the pinpoint right there. You could clip these together and make it be towed by a vehicle. If you got the vehicle tow hooks, I think that's really cool. Um, lots of great little bits in these kits, uh, just fantastic stuff. So definitely, definitely get these. If you're a hobby enthusiast, try them out, paint them up and see what you think of them as well. So can't wait, uh, and, and show me, get on Instagram, tag me and stuff. I want to see how you all are painting these. All right. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed this series, please like and subscribe. Um, if you want to support me financially, there's there's one link down below from Squad Marks where you can buy clear movement trays that I use for all of my infantry in my games. I do highly recommend those. Um, and all the others are just cool companies I really like. So please go down and check that stuff out too. Um, I'm just trying to recommend all the hobby supplies that I really love and enjoy using. Um, so there's that down below. I don't have a Patreon or anything, so just really just following me and commenting, uh, engaging on this post is what I'm here for. I'm here for the community, uh, so please just do that. And um, that's how you can support me, just emotionally. <laughs> but of course, as always, have fun wargaming. And remember, Cadia stands. Mm -hmm.